Now, what genre of music do you consider yourself at this point? I consider myself as a hip hop artist, rap artist, and sometimes I sing, but I'm working on that more. Now, do you remember your first song or what you were rapping or singing about back then? Um, yes. The first song that I created was like, it was about like a, a guy I used to date and with the guy problems and stuff like that, it was like, I was saying like, I want my loyalty back. So like giving it to him and he just destroying it. So I want it back from him. That was one of my first songs that I dropped. And what was the title of that song? Um, Loyalty Back. But it's not on platforms because it's not mixed mastered. I was like so young, like couldn't even have boyfriends then, but I still like went to school and had like a boyfriend. <laughs> Care to share what age you were at the time when you created that? Um, I think I was like around 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had another song called Try Me. It was like a real like, um, I say, hood type song and I was, I, I listened to it now and I'd be like, wow, I was 13, like rapping about that. <laughs> so. But the first song that came out was? Lloyd. Loyalty. Loyalty, that, loyalty that, was, yes. that was first, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, were any of those lyrics true back then on that song? Um, yes, like, well, I was kind of too young to really know about like love and stuff like that, but I understood what was wrong. And how'd you release it back then? Um, I actually, okay, so I asked my mom to buy me a microphone and a keyboard so that I can start recording music. Um, I was making a little bit of my own beat to it and I just kind of went off that. But was it CD back then? Was it a mixtape site? Was it SoundCloud? CD. <laughs> I could have had put it on SoundCloud, but I just had it on a CD because, like, I wasn't really supposed to have, like, like think about boys and stuff like that. So I kind of, like, kept the song to myself. But other people did get the CD. Um, Some people. I started selling it for, like, $2 to people at my school. What was the reaction to that song from people that had heard it back then? Um, They was just, like... You know, they listen to it, and some people vibe to it, but it was other songs that they liked, because I had did, like, a whole CD full of songs. Uh, did your parents ever end up hearing that song? Um, no. My, to this day, my mom still haven't heard that song. I was, it was a group that I was in. Me and my best friend was in a rap group, so it was our CD put together, but I would, like, record and produce everything. She'd come over my house and... We just record on my computer and I play the piano and try to make the best beats I can make. And you guys were a duo? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what was the name of that group back then? It was, we was called La Taurus. She was a Libra and I'm a Taurus. So we kind of combined it, the L-I from the Libra and then put Taurus. So it was La Taurus. And what ended up happening to the group? Um. Well, my... My um, the, my best friend, me and her in the group together, she ended up um, having a child when we were in high school. So she had, I started helping her out with her child and she had to focus more on the child and I was like babysitting the child and stuff. So I kind of went solo after that. And what was her reaction to that? Um, She was okay with it because like it kind of like, she knew that she had to, you know, pay attention to her child and stuff like that. So... It, she was okay with me going solo. Did she end up uh, continuing on with music throughout the years or no, just you? Um, just me, yeah. And care to share the name of the high school you were at at the time? Yes, Beecher High School. Mm -hmm. That's in Michigan. Yes. Mm -hmm. For time reference, it's September 2021 now, mm -hmm. but what's your creative process like these days? Um, like as far as like me being a creative as an artist? Yes. Um, well, I've always been like a real like creative person like that to try different stuff and be different and like stand out. So like my more creative is just having stand in my own lane, like riding my own wave and just just trying to show the world something they ain't never seen before. When it comes to your lyrics, 
Are you a writer or a freestyler and punch in? Um, I consider myself all of them. Um, I can freestyle. I actually dropped the first freestyle I dropped online on Facebook. It went viral with over like 40,000. You know, it, it did good over 40,000. And then like the song that I just dropped now is like one of the best songs that's like doing good so far. Um, so I feel like I'm in both, all of them. For reference, what's the current song you're talking about here? And then what's the song that did over 40,000 on Facebook? What are the titles? Oh, um, okay, so the song that I got out now that's doing good is called Boss, um, my new single, Boss. And the freestyle that went viral, I actually freestyled to um, Seasons by City Girls, and they like that. It was a freestyle to their read. And how were you able to get 40,000 views on it? <sighs> I one Okay, so I was at work, and I was just at work, like, freestyling because we didn't have no work at the moment to do. So I was, like, bored. So I was up there, like, freestyling. like mm. So when I got home, I remembered the stuff I said, and then I just got on there, and I recorded myself. And then I was nervous to drop it at first. I was like, oh, I'm like... This is my first freestyle I'm dropping online, raw freestyle, um, and I just hope that it do good. At first, I wasn't going to post it, and then I ended up, like, was like, okay, I'm going to be confident about this freestyle. I'm going to post it, and then I woke up, and it was just like everybody was sharing it, and I was like, wow. So that's when I was like, you know what? I've been doing music since I was younger and stuff, and I'm like, I feel like this is for me, so I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to go harder. So that's how that played out. So nothing secret to it you just post it on your facebook and it does what it does organically on its own yes you didn't pay for facebook promotion or an ad or anything of that nature no care to share the username for your facebook if people want to go check that out yes um chemistry music llc now when it comes to writing or freestyling, punching, and you said you do all the above, but is it 50-50 for you, or do you do a little bit more on one end versus the other? Um, freestyler versus the single? Yeah. I mean, the song? Yeah, um, yeah. Are you more of a freestyler or more of uh, punching in, or is it truly 50-50? 50-50. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you like from the very beginning, though? Were you a writer at first, or were you a freestyler punching in at first? Um, I was a writer at first, yes. And then I got into more into freestyling because I'm like, I can do my freestyling too. So, um, but I was always into like writing and like actually producing songs and stuff. When it came to freestyling, was that influence for you to do that or was that just natural experimentation? It was n natural experimentation, yes. When you do write, is it pen and pad or on the phone? Um, at first, I started off like pen and pad, and I just had all like so much paper. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to start typing on my phone and writing it like that. So now I'm used to doing it on my phone. Because it is 50-50 for you, writing versus freestyling, how do you decide? Um, I decide by like sometimes I feel like I'm in the mood to drop a freestyle for my supporters and just give them something at the moment while I'm writing and trying to write the perfect song or I guess close to perfect song. So I just give them something. When I freestyle, I give them something to watch, some type of content until I drop my singles. Notice any difference in the actual music when you write versus freestyle and punch in? Um, yes, I feel like when I freestyle, it kind of give me a more like, like go harder. Like, I don't know, like, I can't explain it. Like. I, I rap more hardcore when I'm freestyling, and then, like, when a song, I try to, like, tone it down because, like, not only am I, like, I have so many, I'm versatile, so it's like I can do the hood stuff, I can do the, you know, different type of music, like, not just stick to one thing. You mentioned a place of work here when we were talking about uh, one of your songs. I think the one of you, well, I don't know. I think it was the one of you freestyling and it going viral for 40,000. Yes. Okay, I think you mentioned you did it at your place of work and then you actually uh, redo it for your 
uh, following on Facebook. Yes. Okay. Uh, care to share what that place of work was? Um, it was a place where I worked at. Like I was um, creating like video. Uh, I was not creating, but uh, video game controllers. I was building, helping build video game controllers. Do you still currently work there today? No. How long did you work there for? Um, a year, and I actually end up resigning because, like, I wanted, like, I moved to Atlanta to, like, focus more on my music career, and, like, when I stayed in my hometown, I drained myself so much into my old jobs to where I couldn't focus on my music career, and it's like we were working so many hours, and it was, and I told the manager, I was like, can I at least get some time off so that I can focus on my music career? But they said that wasn't possible, so I actually resigned for my to focus on my music career, my passion. Your hometown, care to reference that? My hometown is a Beecher, yes. And care to share the name of the company that you actually work for at that time? Um, in my hometown in Beecher? Yeah, that video game controller company, care to share the name of that? Oh, oh yes, that was um that's actually was in Atlanta when I first just moved here to Atlanta. Oh, okay. Um, but before that the job that I worked at before I moved here, I was a nursing assistant. So I worked in a hospital, I had a job in the nursing home. I had like three jobs. But uh the one the video game controller job, care to share the name of that company? Uh huh, Scuff. Scuff Gaming. And they were so, like, they loved me, but I just was like, I got to go. I, I'm chasing, I moved here to chase my passion, and I don't have enough time to chase my passion because, you know, it was a lot a lot workload because they have a lot of customers, so we just stay working. And what was your role there? Um, I was, like, I did different ones. Like, I started off, um, like, boxing up, boxing them up and, like, like you know, programming, and then I went, then I got moved to the other side, and I was doing, like, I was on assembly line and just going to different parts, like, everywhere around. Um, did you have an official position? Was Did you have, like, a, an official title of position? Um, I know that's I more so a description of what you painted, but was there an actual position title for what you were doing there? Um, was it no. called something of some sort, or...? Because I started off, like, as a temp, and then I had got hired in. So, like, they liked my work ethic, and they was like, we got to hire you in. So I was hired in, I could, I guess I could say video game engineer something, video controller engineer. And what was that like working at Scuff? It was very fun because I've never, like, worked with video games or nothing. So it was very fun. Like, we would always get, like, the the CEO will always buy us all type of food. Like, you know, we have good lunches. Um, and I got close to a lot of my coworkers. Like, we weren't, like, at each other's throats or nothing like that. Like, some of them was, like, family to me. So when I did quit, I was, like, sad. I actually cried before I quit. I was like, oh, my God. But everybody in the whole entire job knew I did music. And they would support me. Like, if I was to get me votes or something to perform somewhere, like, they would all vote for me at the job. And just for clarification, I know you said you did, like, three jobs. When you said you did, like, three jobs, you mean you've had three jobs throughout your life? Or when you were talking about the nursing situation, you had three jobs in that scenario there? Yeah, in that scenario. Like, hospital, nursing, and two nursing homes. Okay. Mm hmm and what was your role? A um, nursing assistant? Yes. For mm -hmm. all three of those? Yes. Okay. I started off as a direct care worker, and then I worked my way to taking my nursing assistant classes, and then I was doing that. And that was my title, like, throughout the whole healthcare field. Now, when it comes to your music at this point, uh, ever had help with your lyrics? Um, no, no. I mean, some people have offered help, but... I mean, it never played through. It never went through. But I, uh, I write every single one of my lyrics right now. For you, is that an ego thing? Is that an ownership thing? Is that a money thing? Why um, yeah, you do I, your lyrics 
by yourself? Some people get help, some people don't. Just curious to see where your mindset is at with that. Um, I kind of, okay, like somebody writing for me, I do feel like, wow, it's just, it's not coming out of me, you know? Um, so that's how I would feel if someone wrote for me, like it's not coming out of me. And I feel so much better that it comes out of me because I feel like, wow, like you are talented, you know, like you really write your own music and stuff like that. But, you know, I feel like if somebody like throw me a song or something like that and be like, uh, how would you sound on this? I kind of be like, let's see how it sounds first. But I still deep down feel like it's just not me writing it, though. Like it's not coming out of me. Now. Has anyone ever suggested uh, you get help with your lyrics? Yes, some people suggest it. Like, and, um, you know, I took their advice because I, I could take, like, criticism on my music really good. Um, and I just, like, take it as, like, okay, you suggested it, but I'm going to work on my craft more as well. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, ever helped other recording artists with their lyrics? No, but I want to. Like, you know, if I get the opportunity to write, like, something for somebody, and I, I would love to hear them, you know. When it comes to your own personal lyrics, how honest are they? Um, They're 100% honest. Like, okay, like, my lyrics when I was, like, growing up, you know, been trying to be a rapper at 13 years old. Some of my lyrics was just like from the stuff that I was seeing, like my older family members going through and stuff like that. And just, you know, seeing from them and learning from them. But now me as an adult, like I own up to everything I rap about. Now, ever wrote or freestyled and punched in a lyric so honest it was requested to be removed by someone? Yes. My, with my sister. My sister was like, I don't think you should say that yet. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And you listened to her? Yeah. Because it was, it was kind of, it was, it was a lot. That, that verse was a lot. <laughs> was it about her by any chance? No. Okay. And it wasn't like about like the struggles or nothing growing up, like in my family or nothing like that. It was something that would get me looked at kind of crazy. That people, a lot of people, some people understand it, but most people like, what? Something you want to dive a little deeper in in this interview or keep it like that? I'm going to keep it like that. And um, that song, though, did that song still come out uh, publicly even though that portion was removed? Yes. Well, I did. I dropped snippets of it, um, but I haven't, like, fully released it. Uh, care to share the title of this song mm -hmm. so people can look out for it in the event it does drop in its entirety? Yes, it's called God's Intro. So it was basically about a lot of stuff that I had went through. Um, because, like, I was sick with pneumonia. So it's about me having pneumonia in there and just everything else that came along with, you know, with that. Um being in a hospital bed for two months, not breathing on my own, right before I moved to Atlanta. So I was just like, you know what, after that, I'm about to just get up and go chase my dreams because life is too short. Do you know how you got pneumonia? Um, no, I'm, I'm thinking that it was just, just popped up like, cause I really don't have no idea how I caught pneumonia, but it was, I went septic and every organ in my body was shutting down on me. So I had to get on a breathing machine for going on four days. I woke up on Mother's Day um, off the machine. And after like, what, two months of being in the hospital, I still had to have a nurse come to my house to check on me. And it's just like, I was just like, you know what? I got to go live my life, you know? And after that, I moved to Atlanta and I'm here. Now, I know there was a time when you did work as a nursing assistant in three different ways, mm -hmm. did you catching pneumonia have anything to do with that job at all? I kind of 
feel like it did a little bit. I cut cause I I noticed before like I exited out of the field for a while that I wasn't feeling as sick as I was, you know, in the field. You know, I feel like I had a weak immune system working in the hospitals and stuff like that around, like, you know, having to take care of, like, sick people and stuff like that. I feel like my immune system was kind of weak to, you know, catching on to all of that. But I still kept my strength to take care of people who really needed more help than me. So you were still, just for clarification, you were still working at, as a nursing assistant when you caught pneumonia? Yes. Actually, I was feeling so, so sick, like the last, what, week or so. And it's like I kept calling in from my other, my first, first ever nursing assistant job. I was there for like, what, four years and I kept, it was a new HR, I just kept calling in because I didn't feel good, but I, I didn't know what was going on. And and it's like the same day she called me, she was like, I called in, she was like, I'm sorry, we got to let you go. And I was like, why? She said, because you got too many call-ins. I was like, because I'm sick. And next day I went septic in the hospital. So... Everybody from the job was like, why did, you know, they was checking on me and stuff like, we don't know why we, you told her you were sick, you know, you told them, but they didn't listen. So I was just in the hospital after that two months. When you caught this pneumonia, this was before the pandemic of coronavirus and COVID-19? Yes. It was back in 2000, um, what, 2017. What do you think your key to survival was? Um, my key to survival? What do you think your key to survival was? Could you have died from this? Yes, the doctors told my mom that I wasn't going to make it. They told my family, like, she's not going to make it. So everybody was just at the hospital going crazy and stuff. And then I just so happened to wake up and be alive. And everybody was like, the doctors were shocked, like, wow. So that leads to that question. What do you think your key to survival was? Are you able to pinpoint that? Um, hmm, let me see. Was there something that kept you from passing away? Was there something that kept you from dying? I feel like the nurses, act, I mean, the doctors and the nurses actually, you know, um, did they part, but I actually honestly feel like it was, it was God. It was God who kept me, that got me still here. Speaking of God, do you follow religion at all? Yes. Um, I'm a Christian, but I, I, it's like, um, like I believe like in the universe. Um, but I actually, I believe that God created the universe. So it's like when I catched all of the universe numbers, I still thank God. Like, thank you, God. I know that you're sending messages through the angels and I know that you, you know, letting me know what steps I need to take. When I see all of these numbers, like the whole month of August, I done caught 11-11, not on purpose. Actually caught it today, twice. What does that mean to you? Um, it's just like the eleven eleven, it just makes me feel like it means to me that, you know, like my everything that my heart desire that I want in life is coming to me. I just have to be patient and I gotta keep putting in work, but it's it's just letting me know that it's there. It's coming. It's it's already here, but I believe that it's everything that I want is already here. When it comes to Christianity, mm -hmm. is it a certain denomination under Christianity at all? Or is it just Christianity, generally speaking? Just Christianity, like believing in God, knowing that he's real, having my faith in him, and just knowing that he's by my side. And why Christianity for you? Um, that's Well, I was raised up to be a Christian. Um... And that's just really how it started. Um, but as far as like, you know, like, like the, I go to church and stuff like that. But I just feel like, like me being closer to God is, is him being in my heart. Like me having a good heart is being close to him. Like, 
despite like the way that I, you know, if I dress revealing, I don't, I just feel like you should just have a good heart, treat people right and move right, you know. And when you say you were raised uh, as a Christian, was this both your mother and father, one side or the other, or another person? Um, it's, it came from my mother because my father has been incarcerated since I was a little girl. So I was raised up by my mom, but I still keep, you know, contact with my dad. Like, he's actually um, back in jail right now. Um, but I grew up a kid that was raised by my mom and dad incarcerated, and I had, like, a stepdad help taking care of us. And when it comes to the universe and the numbers and things of that nature, uh, what's your mother's thoughts on that? Um, well, my mom, she's a really, really like, like super holy person. Like she, she, I feel like her dreams is to become a pastor. You know, I feel like she needs to just go ahead and just become a pastor because she, is so great at that like she's awesome like she prays for us she calls us all of my me and my siblings she calls and she prays over us um i get all my god stuff from my mom so um when i tell her about manifestation and stuff like that like she's she's more on the strictly fully just like god side and i'm trying to teach her more about the manifestations and stuff like that has that caused a rift between you and your mother at all? No. She, like, she's just, like, listen and just be like, oh, okay. Like, she's open to hear more about it. And at what point, when it comes to the universe of things and manifestation, mm -hmm. what age were you when you start accepting that into your life? Um, Actually, when I moved to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. When I moved to Atlanta, I got more into like the universe and stuff. How did that happen? Um, it's just like I would see like a lot of people like talking about it, like um, like it just would pop up just on my YouTube and stuff like that. And I just like so happened one day to just actually sit there and watch it and watch somebody talk about it. And I was like, wow, like and then I was like, Okay, well, let me like try to like manifest some stuff into my life and it seemed like once I manifested like I started seeing life a lot different when I manifested I was like wow like I see stuff that I didn't see back then like it's unexplainable now when it comes to the breathing machine the four days you were on it mm -hmm. were you sleep throughout that whole process? Because you mentioned waking up. Yes. Yep, I was sleep. It just felt like I was like sleep the whole time. Like, just sleep. Like, I didn't see nothing. Like, I didn't, it just felt like I was in a deep sleep. And then when I woke up um, and opened my eyes, I had this breathing machine and I had this long needle in my neck. Because none of my veins would work for them to take blood out. So they had to go in my neck and um, put a pick line in my neck. And then when I um, well, well, I woke up the day and the breathing machine was like all the way down to my stomach. And all I could see is the like blur and the doctors like cough when I woke up. And when I coughed, they pulled this long tube like out my whole throat. That was the breathing machine. And after that. I had like catheters in, like I had to learn how to walk again, all of that. So the four days you were asleep, were you medically put to sleep by any chance? Yes, cause um, so the day that I felt sick and I was like, you know what, I need to just go to the hospital cause I was feeling sick a few days before that. And when I went to the hospital, my, um, my stepdad, he was at the hospital he's, cause they had admitted me. And he was in the hospital room with me, and I was just, like, about to go to sleep. And then I turned on my side, and I just couldn't breathe at all. So I'm just fighting for air, telling my dad, like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And so then he called the um, 
the doctors, well, the nurses, and said, my daughter can't breathe and stuff. So they came in, and I just got to going crazy because I don't like needles, like none of that type of stuff. So when they came in trying to put me on oxygen and stuff like that, they was poking me, poking my finger. My blood glucose level was low. It was just a whole, they just kept poking my fingers, and I could just see myself laying in a hospital bed just blur, but everybody is around me. And I'm screaming for my mama, I'm screaming for my daddy. And then I see this lady come in and she started picking at my wrist like this. And then it's just, I didn't remember nothing else after that. So she sedated me. Is this called something when you were sedated? Um, like, was this like a medically induced coma? Is that what they call it? Or is it, or am I using too strong of a language there? No, I think it was a, a medically induced coma. Yeah. Cause and and what really made me go crazy, real crazy, is because I actually was in the same hospital I worked at. So when they caught a certain cold that was was a bad cold and I was a nursing assistant reacting to the other patients when they had the colds, like that cold was like, Oh, she's you know, she is it's really bad. So when they said caught the cold on me, I really started going crazy because I'm like, what? Because I worked there and knew the code. And that's the hospital I was hospitalized at. What was that code? Uh, no, I think it was either cold red or cold blue. It's been a few years because since I had pneumonia, like it was a lot of stuff I couldn't really remember. Like a lot of stuff in my past life, it was weird. So when you initially go to the hospital and your stepdad is with you and things of that nature, is this you just going to the emergency room type of thing because you were feeling ill? Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, I was feeling. Well, actually, my um, one of my best friends, her mom was a registered nurse, and I was telling her how I felt. And she was like, you need to drop everything and you need, she said, you need to take your ass to the hospital. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go to the hospital. And then when I went to the hospital, she, I feel like she helped save my life too, cause she told me to go. And they said that, like a few, uh, any time longer, I had fluid in my lungs. They had to drain a whole liter of fluid out my lungs, out the back. Do you know what symptom it was that cued her to tell you to go to the hospital? Um, what did I tell her? Was it something that that she heard you say that was like, okay, yeah, you gotta drop everything? I think it was I think I told her I was like shortness of breath and um I was feeling weak, like and then like the whole day before I had decided to go to the hospital, I was I literally was so scared to lay down because I was shortness of breath that I was sitting up on the couch sleeping like that trying to sleep like that. Now, some people hear that phrase shortness of breath, but don't know exactly what that means. Are you able to describe shortness of breath? Yes, like, you know, like when you're trying to breathe, but it's kind of hard for you to, like get the whole breath out. So you like, instead of like a full breath, you like, and then you start feeling like hot a little bit too. Like you feel like a rush or something. Like you just start, um, hallucinating because you're feeling like you can't breathe. When they take out this tube from the breathing machine that was keeping you uh, going, uh, do you actually feel that? Um, when you it, describe them, when you described it at the bottom of your stomach and they taking it out, did you actually feel all that? Yeah, but it, it didn't hurt. It was like, like they was pulling a big string out of me, like, yeah, it was just like a, a big stream coming out of my throat, but it didn't like hurt my chest or my lungs or nothing like that. What about that uh, pick, that needle through your neck? <sighs> my goodness. It was so, it, it was more irritating on my neck than anything. Um, Cause they like, I couldn't get no sleep in the hospital. Like they had, every night they had to come draw blood out my neck and then Sometimes it'll leak so bad that they have to like clean it and put like, you know, like the sanitizer and stuff like that. And um, when they did that, I just hated that because I didn't get no rest and 
every time I turn around, it's like this smell when they draw in the blood and they have to put the saline in or clean the, the tube. And the saline just was, it just made me, the smell of it, it was just horrible. Why did you have to stay in the hospital for that amount of time? Um, Because, well, my my family, when my mom then told me that they was like running tests to try to see what was actually wrong with me and what was going on. And like I had, they gave me some medications that was like um, I was allergic to. So it put so much fluid on my body. Like it made me like huge, like swelling and huge. I couldn't walk, so when I when they started to have me to walk, it was like my stomach was so tight to where it felt like it was gonna bust, so I couldn't even bend. I had to wear like a, um, a diaper. They had to put a diaper brief on me. Um, I couldn't do nothing on my own. And when I did start to try to walk again and they get, get me up and stuff, that would be painful. I was scared to walk up and down the stairs again. I, my eyes was blurred. It was like a whole mess. What about the catheters? Was that painful at all? Yeah, it was It was irritating. I, was, I begged them to take that out, like, as soon as I can get that out. But it was, it was very... Like, because I, me as a nursing assistant, like, I would see, like, you know, all my patients and stuff going through the catheters and stuff like that. And I just was like, wow. And then I, I, I couldn't even, like, reach water or nothing. I had to just keep pressing the car light and stuff like that just to get the stuff. So, I don't know. It's kind of like, I don't regret going through it because I actually really felt how, like, like patients, you know, my patients felt. So when I did get well, which I was treating my patients amazing. I never did anything wrong to my patients. I always treated them like family and stuff. But, like, it just really gave me a glance on how, you know, how they feel for real. And, and when I did get back into the field and stuff, I'm like, I understand. I completely understand. Because I started back doing it when I first moved to Atlanta. Then I had, like, just stopped that because... I was at a job and uh, I was telling a coworker about like showing them about like my music and stuff like that. And I just kind of felt like, you know, she was kind of being a little bit of jealous coworker that I was doing music and I was popping my stuff with that. And I was like, I don't need this negativity, so I need to leave this job. When it came to the catheter, care to share where the catheter was? It it went up my vagina. <laughs> That's where it was at. And like, I would never want another one. <laughs> How long did you have to have that there for? Um, I think I was, I think I had that in for like two weeks of the, the whole, like the two weeks of the hospital time just for two weeks. And I begged the nurse, like, can somebody take this thing off? And they was like, when you learn how to urinate again. And then I showed them and they was like, okay, you know. And how I know how they took it out is because it was like like leaking. So it was like leaking through. So I'm like, I, I feel like I could be back to normal with that again. So with that, what was the painful part? Was it the removal of it, or it was just having it in you for the two weeks? Yeah, having it in there. Because when they took it out, I ain't felt nothing. But just with it just being in there, and then I was so uncomfortable because, like, I was trying to, like, I couldn't really turn like I wanted to turn without the core snatching, and I didn't want to rip it out. So <laughs> I was just sitting there, like, still and irritated with it. Now, did you have a near-death experience at all? Um, besides that... Let me give you the definition so we're on the same page. Okay. As defined by Oxford Languages, an unusual experience taking place on the brink of death and recounted by a person after recovery. Typically an out-of-body experience or a vision of a tunnel of light. Um, so did you have a near-death experience during the course of the pneumonia? I know they said you could have died, but that's not what I mean by near-death experience. I mean by 
what I just described here, an unusual experience taking place on the brink of death and recounted by a person after recovery, typically an out-of-body experience or a vision of a tunnel of light? No. Just curious. Well, the last light I seen was like lights, like bright lights of them, like all around me at the hospital. But hospital as far lights. as that, no. Now, I'm going to ask you this next question. You may have answered it when you said, you know, you know what it's like being on the opposite end, being a patient when you used to be the nurse mm -hmm. and the tables had turned. Yes. That could be the answer to this next question, but if it's not, then give me the answer. Okay. But what did this entire experience teach you? What did you learn from this ordeal, if anything? Um. I and if that was your answer about the tables turning, then that's fine. We could leave it like that. But if it's a different answer, go ahead and say it. Um, well, I learned that, like, you just have to live your life, you know, because you just never know what could happen. Um, I didn't feel like I was, like, like learning how to walk. It, it taught, like, I had to learn how to walk again. It really taught me to appreciate walking like, even if I'm just standing, like, walking and stuff, because I could not use my legs at all. Um, it, it taught me to love myself more um, and to just take care of myself more. Because, I mean, I know it's, I probably caught pneumonia for something, but it just it taught me to take better care of my health after that. If you could turn back the hands of time, would you have done anything different in this situation? Um, I definitely would have worked more on my health. Um, and that was just really it because it just hit me out of nowhere. Do you think this could have been prevented by any chance? No. Let's say someone's watching this right now mm -hmm. and they have pneumonia. Now, circumstances could be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, is there anything you would say to someone watching this going through it? Um, try to keep yourself as healthy as you can. Um, don't, because I know they say like when you let too much of the rain hit you, it makes you sick with you know, more pneumonia. So try not to, try to go outside. If it's cold outside, try to go fully with a coat on and warm. Um, don't let the artist rain hit you and stuff with, when you don't got nothing on that's covering you up. Like if you wearing something like this, don't let the rain be hitting your chest and stuff like that. Um, and that's, and just keep up with your health. Keep your immune system strong. Since this incident, what's your opinion on nurses, doctors, hospitals, the um, medical field, the medical industry? I feel like um, like nursing, some nurse, I'm not going to say every nursing assistant because I was a good nursing assistant. Um, but I feel like some nursing assistants really need, like when you, when the patients press that call button, they really need help. Cause I was, I needed my water. I needed a lot of stuff when I was pressing that call light cause I could not move. I couldn't do nothing with myself. So they don't need to, they need to be there at them call lights. Um, and as far as like the nurses, I had wonderful nurses, like to the point I was, I just, like gave them cards, like thank you cards after I got out the hospital for like taking care of me so good like that. The doctors was on point. Like it was, I was supposed to have got released that same day. Well, one of the days, well, the last day, but I had to stay over a lot more because I had a temperature and they wouldn't let me out the hospital. And I was like so mad about it. Cause I like, I want to go home. I want to go home. I'm stressed out in this hospital sitting in this bed because I'm usually so used to getting up and moving around and you know, working all of the jobs and stuff like that. But the doctors made sure that I left on a good note. So big ups to the doctors that care and the nurses that care and then the nursing assistants, like when them car lights is pressed, 
you need to be there for real because they don't just press them for no reason. Anything else you'd like to say in regards to that? Um, no. When it comes to your lyrics, mm -hmm. what has been your hardest bar so far? Um, let's see. Hardest thing you ever said so far? I say, on my new single, Boss. Um, yeah, my new single, Boss, like, the second verse, like, it just blew everybody's minds. The second verse. Because I, I, rap, I rapped so hardcore, and I gave them um, fast. Like, I can rap fast. So I gave them a fast, nice ending, and they like, wow. Like, even people come up to my mom at her job, she tell me and say, your daughter, she got wired. She can rap. So many people come up to my mama at her job and tell her that.